Obviously, you've got quite a degree of passion about this issue. What, um, what underpins that passion? Well, look, I've got a little two-year-old. She's almost three now. And I guess I need to be able to look her in the eye and tell her that I did everything I could to protect our land and our environment. And see, it's not just our food producing land here in the Darling Downs, which we've got so little good quality ag land that we've just got to protect it. But it's also the reef, because of course they're dredging millions and millions of tonnes for new export ports, mostly for coal seam gas, but also for coal. So I, I need to tell her that I did everything I could to try and stop that and to try and bring some sense back. And you know, it just, it makes no sense that we're putting short-term profits ahead of long-term sustainable industries and our long-term ability to keep feeding ourselves and the world. So it's that profit motive and that short-term thinking that really gets up my goat. And you know, we just need to start thinking long-term about this and acting in the interests of all Queenslanders, not just a few vested interests who stand to make a buck out of it. It's the fundamental unfairness of it, I think, that motivates me. Okay, um, you've talked a bit about um, the interests of all Queenslanders. Obviously, you've got some interesting company here uh, in the campaign against coal seam gas. Um, there have been some suggestions, and I think there was a quote from Libby Connors about um, possible exchange of preferences between the Catter Party and the Greens. Is um, that something that you would welcome? Look, uh, certainly I'll, I'll just make sure that um, no comments have been made in that respect because we've always been clear that it's up to the voter to decide where their preferences go. And in fact, I think the Catter Party came out yesterday saying the same thing. So we've all been very clear about how um, no one's making any arrangements. It is well and truly up to the voter to make that call. When they're in the ballot box, it is their choice and no one else makes that judgment for them. Um, now, the peculiarity of the Queensland system is, of course, is that you don't even have to preference any of the old parties at all. So people might think that only the Greens deserve their vote. Um, certainly that's how I feel, but that's a choice for Queenslanders. Um, but in terms of the support that we're getting from the Catters Australia Party um, and from the bush, we really welcome that. I think it's that united front that we need to show to tell the old parties that, hey, it's not okay to be threatening our food producing land, it's not okay to be threatening our reef, and it's not okay to be selling out regional Queensland for a few quick bucks. So we really welcome and I think it strengthens the movement when you've got people from perhaps unlikely alliances standing together, all saying, no, you've got to protect this land. This is our heart. This is what will give us our future. Okay, um, you've talked a bit about, um, about the community coming together. Obviously, Parliament has a role to play in all these issues too. Um, you're a senator, you're a member of federal parliament. I believe you've introduced some bills relevant to coal seam gas. Could you tell us um, really briefly about what those entail? Yeah, I have. Look, I've got two bills to try and deal with coal, coal and coal seam gas. The first one is one to give the federal government some proper power to protect our water. Uh, now, what we've seen so far is the federal government doing all, its, all it can to wash its hands of responsibility here and trying to say that it's the state government's problem, it's got nothing to do with the feds. Well, frankly, that's just a cop out. And what my bill would do is to amend our environmental laws and say that the federal government has to stick up for our ground and surface water when it's going to be impacted on by mining. So that's the first important part. It's to make sure that the feds can play that oversight role and that the states can't just trash our water and get away with it. Um, the other bill that I've got is to give landholders the right to say no to coal seam gas mining on their land because unfortunately they lack that at the moment. And of course we've seen uh, today the strength of the community protest, but at the uh, Scenic Rim protest uh, a few weeks ago now, we saw massive coal seam gas tankers trampling over Akubras. So we saw a real symbolic demonstration of the, the scant regard that these big companies are playing to communities. And we, we just have to give people the right to say no, I want to keep farming my land, I don't want to take the risk with my water. Until we know it's safe, I don't want to take the risk. So that's what my bill would do. Uh, and the other thing I've got on the boil, which I'm really seeking support from the other parties on and from the community, is a fresh inquiry into coal seam gas. We looked at it a little bit last year in the terms of the Murray-Darling, and that's really important too. But Coal seam gas is important across the country. It's not just an issue in the Murray-Darling. It's actually going to go everywhere if we don't try and stop it. So this inquiry would look at the full gamut of issues, um, the full breadth of the country, and importantly, it would include things like Gladstone Harbour and the other ports and dredging proposed for export um, for coal and coal seam gas to make sure that we can try and get to the bottom of what the hell is going on in our reef and who thought that was okay and who's actually looking at, at that as one and saying, actually, the reef can't handle that. So I'm really hoping that I'll get the support from the other parties, but I think it's the community backing that will push them, probably kicking and screaming, to try and support those initiatives. So I'll be urging everyone to make sure that they let their reps know that we need this new inquiry, we need the federal government to protect our water, and we need landholders to be able to say no to coal seam gas.